The Reynolds Transport Theorem provides a link between the system approach and the control volume approach, which is useful for solving fluids problems. Let us understand this important theorem using a soap bottle. You can work with this soap bottle in two ways. Either work with a system approach or work with a control volume. In system approach mass is conserved, no mass is allowed to cross the system boundary. But, in a control volume, mass can cross the boundary. The green boundary line is for control volume, whereas pink one is for system approach. When some liquid of the bottle are discharged, the system approach considers the discharged mass or liquid as part of the system and tracks it. It is a difficult job. Thus the mass of the system remains constant and the boundary expands. The control volume approach, however, is not concerned at all with the soap liquid that has escaped the bottle and thus the mass of the control volume decreases during this process, while its volume remains constant. Therefore, the system approach treats the discharge process as an expansion of the system's volume. Whereas the control volume approach considers it as a discharge through the control surface of the fixed control volume. In fluid mechanics, it is usually more convenient to work with control volumes, and thus there is a need to relate the changes in a control volume to the changes in a system. The relationship between these approaches is expressed by Reynolds' transport theorem. It provides the link between the system and control volume approaches. Now, consider flow from left to right, through this converging nozzle. When the liquid flows, we isolate this nozzle and draw the system and control volume boundary. Green one is control volume and pink one is the system. So at this instant, the system coincides with the control volume, and thus the system and control volume are identical. The control volume is fixed, and the liquid or system passes through this section 1 and 2, also called control surface. When time passes, or during time interval delta t, the original system leaves the control volume with velocity v2, and the new system try to occupy its space with velocity v1. L right, at initial time t. Mass of system is equal to mass of control volume. But in little increment of time, mass of the same system is mass occupied by new and the old system within the control volume at time t plus delta t minus mass occupied a new system at time t plus delta t plus total mass that leaves the control volume at time t plus delta t. Let's replace the mass by any extensive property. Because not only mass, it can be energy, momentum or other extensive property that can be used in system. Now, subtracting the first equation from the second one and dividing by delta t gives by taking the limit as delta t goes zero, we can finally use the definition of derivative. Hey, look at it. The time rate of change of the property b of the system 
is equal to the time rate of change of B of the control volume plus the net flux of B out of the control volume by mass crossing the control surface. This is the desired relation. Since it relates the change of a property of a system to the change of that property for a control volume. The influx is the extensive property like mass or energy that enters through section 1 having velocity V1 having control surface area A1. So total mass or other extensive property that enters through this control surface and become part of control volume at surface I. Note here, section 1 is plane where system enters. And section I is small volume where new system stays in small time delta T. So section I is small part of control volume. And B, in, is the total flux, on this section I. The same goes for section 2 which leaves the control surface, but section II, is not part of control volume, instead it is part of system. Also, velocities V1 and V2 are uniform. On those volumetric section I and section II. Here small b is the intensive property. If you divide extensive property by mass, you get intensive property. If you are still confused about how this equation arrived, then remember. Extensive property is mass times intensive property but mass is density times volume and volume is area times velocity. The influx and outflux of the property B in this case are easy to determine since there is only one inlet and one outlet and the velocities are approximately normal to the surfaces at sections 1 and 2. In general, however, we may have several inlet and outlet ports, and the velocity may not be normal to the control surface at the point of entry. Also, the velocity may not be uniform. Look at this green control volume. Masses are entering and leaving through its surfaces. So, imagine it having several inlet and outlet ports. Then, the total amount of the masses or other extensive property flowing out of this control volume is obtained by integrating over its entire control surface. To generalize this process, we consider a differential surface area dA on the control surface and denote its unit outer normal by n vector. The flow rate of property B through dA is. Now if we integrate over entire area. An important aspect of this relation is that it automatically subtracts the inflow from the outflow. Also, last time, the properties do not vary within the control volume, they are uniform but, they may vary with position, in general. In such a case, the total amount of property B within the control volume must be determined by integration. A positive value indicates an increase in the B content, and a negative value indicates a decrease. Finally, 
This is the full Reynolds transport theorem for fixed control volume having varying extensive property.